getting back to the question of identification as a separate person, as a separate self, as a Chris, mm -hmm. as opposed to what hopefully everybody's experienced in the last few seconds of this experiment, is the function of what we call a specific kind of thinking called memory. Hmm. Memory is a tricky thing that helps us put this thing, this perfectly boundless and infinite thing, and try to stick it in a box. Maybe you talk a little bit about memory. Hmm. Uh, I, I think a good way to expose it in, an, in a kind of a new way uh, from because uh, again we're just so familiar with it we accept it unquestioningly as being valid or that this memory is my memory or it's whatever we just accept it and you know maybe don't think of the the so-called alternative but it, it's funny it has to do with um, a question that really used to bug me and I mean it gnawed at me and made me feel very uncomfortable for a long time was this, and probably many others seemingly have had this same experience, not awareness itself, let's emphasize that first of all. It's never having any such problems, but <clears throat> it had to do with, okay, awareness is infinite, it's all, now doggone it, why is it that when I get conked on the head and get knocked out, or if I go to the hospital and have heavy anesthesia for a surgery, why is there no memory of that experience? If, oh. if, if there's no memory, how could I be conscious? See, consciousness isn't here. Exactly, the right. Why is it that, because consciousness clearly has gone away, because I don't have any recall of what happened then. So what's the deal here? Then if consciousness is all, it, what did it do, go on vacation? Or, you know, how did a surgeon do, consciousness can't be all if something that a surgeon or an anesthesiologist does wipes it out for a couple of hours. What we say is normal consciousness, and this is from the human perspective, and frankly we're talking about consciousness with the little c. Mm. But in other words, I, I was mixing what I meant by consciousness. And by that I mean I was saying that, well, this experience of noticing the various five senses, visual images and sounds and also Peter thoughts and Peter feelings, all of which you know seem to be going on during the day. I was mistakenly saying that's consciousness and we're told usually that's what consciousness is. And however when you look at those things closely what are we talking about? All these and by the way when Peter gets heavy anesthesia, all that stuff is gone. So then consciousness is gone because there's no recollection, there's no visual sights during surgery, there's no remembrance of thoughts. I did have, you know, heavy anesthesia once to get a tooth pulled out, a wisdom tooth extraction. So I, I did, there's just nothing, it seemed like. So where did it go? But then you say, wait a minute, what exactly is it that was gone? It was the visual images that were gone. It was the sounds that were gone. It was the smells that were gone. It was all the Peter thoughts and the Peter feelings, as I said earlier. But what is that? All of that is just stuff I appeared to be conscious of. All of that was just finity. It was just sensations. It was observable phenomena. It was all time. It was all finity. And you go, wait a minute. What about conscious, true consciousness with the capital C? And this is not something I'm, you know, conveniently making fit my uh, example here, but the actual stuff, consciousness itself, doesn't have any of those qualities. Consciousness itself, apart from what is we seem to be conscious of, consciousness has no shape, it has no visual appearance. It has no sound, it has no color, it has you know, none of those things. It has no time duration. So there's nothing observable about consciousness to begin with. There's nothing finite there 
in the way of a phenomenal experience that you can say, I had that experience of consciousness because there's nothing formed. There's nothing that you can, you know, say was experienced. So what seems to have been gone during the unconsciousness wasn't consciousness itself. It was just all the stuff that seemed to be, I seemed to be conscious of by way of the senses and thinking. All, in other words, all the stuff with, which goes with body identification, the body mind, this, the sense mind, as we say. It's all the finity that's gone, but consciousness wasn't finite to begin with. It wasn't observable to begin with. It wasn't something you can say, I mean, can you have a memory of consciousness? Right. No, because it's now. It's present. And right. as we were saying earlier, you cannot, it's not possible to have a memory of now because it's not past, it's now. And now is not thinking of itself as if it were, you know, some kind of mental image of itself. Now doesn't think. The present is not past, so how can the present remember its own presentness?